I go. Can y'all hear me in the back okay? Okay. Because I, uh, I don't want to disturb uh, our neighbors. Okay. I don't have the names, and I don't have the uh, details. This is a story that I heard, so if y'all have heard this story, uh, correct me after, after the speech. It was during the Depression, right before World War II, the United States government, they were in need of someone that could do Morse code, that was very fluent in Morse code. Jobs were few, and this job paid an unbelievable salary for the times then, and people from all over, they came to apply for this job. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name, we'll just call him Ted. For whatever reason, uh, he was late getting to this interview. So when he approached the door and walked in, there was over 150 people in this room that was applying for this job. A gentleman was sitting at the door with a clipboard in his lap with an ink pen just kind of tapping on his clipboard. And Ted said, excuse me, sir, is this where I check in? And he said, yes. He said, well, how does this work? He said, well, that door over there is where they're doing the interview. Uh, they have interviewed several since it has started. Here's your number. Just get in line, and when your number is called, just walk in there and do your interview. And he said, uh, we are going to interview everyone in here, so you're not, you're not going to be left out. So Ted goes, the gentleman sits down, continue tapping on his clipboard, and Ted was sitting there. Of course, everybody in the room, they were talking amongst themselves and uh, you know how you do as a group. And it wasn't five minutes, I guess. You know, Ted was, what, 150 in line? It wasn't five minutes, and Ted just gets up, and walks to the door, walks on into an interview that was ongoing, and shuts the door. Now, you can imagine the crowd of people sitting out there that saw this. I wasn't there, so I have no idea what they said, but we can imagine. It wasn't two minutes later, the door opens back up. The one that was being interviewed just walked out amongst the crowd. The interviewer had his hand over Ted's shoulder. He said, congratulations. This interview is over. Y'all can all go home. We have found our Morse code operator. So the people in the, in the crowd were just livid, and they were wanting to know why he came in last, walked in front of everybody into an ongoing interview, and got the job. He said, well, gentlemen, if you were paying attention, that man that was sitting at the door with the clipboard tapping it with his pen was tapping out in Morse code. If you can interpret this, come in the office. The job is yours. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to preach to you today. <laughs> But that is a sermon right there that could preach for two hours. You could, you could show all kind of examples of what, what that represented. Now, this is a true story. Like I said, the, the names and the details I'm a little shy of. But here's the point. We in the world today are in a, we're in a, a, a group, and it's just mummery. We're just talking amongst ourselves. There's division taking place. There is one group, you know, you can imagine when you're in a group of, of people like that, they've already formed their little cliques. You know, you have a group of people over here interested in this stuff and a group over here interested in this stuff. And if collectively they would have united, paid attention to what was going on, there would have been a mad rush for that door. But they missed out because they weren't paying attention. They weren't stepping out of the noise and becoming aware of what's going on around them. They're not. 
Now, for those of you that were here last year, I'm not going to repeat the whole speech, but I am going to use just one, maybe two things that I talked about back then. History repeats itself. What I'm focusing on right now with you is if you go back in all kind of battles, ancient history, you name it, when it hit the fan, it was the ancient technology that won. It was the ancient technology that saw them through. You can have biblical examples. David and Goliath. Man, they had shields, they had swords, they had the latest technology. And David used a slingshot and brought down the giant. I spoke about the Black Robe Regiment, the three preachers that started the Revolutionary War. Three preachers that had had enough and took up arms to not only protect their practitioners, but to protect and take this country back from a tyrannical government. Three preachers ran out of wadding for their musket balls, started using pages out of the Bible for wadding and their muskets. And they won a nation. Ancient technology. I could, I could go on. And I'm going to close with the same thing I closed with uh, last year just to drive the message home. We here are ancient technology. No offense to anyone. <laughs> We're ancient technology. And I want you to consider this for a moment. If we step out of the crowd and listen to the man tapping on the clipboard, fires that are happening out in the countrysides on our whole west coast are driving people from their homes into inner city life. Everywhere you turn, that's, that's the objective, it seems, is to take people from the rural areas, put them in urban areas where they can be easily maintained and controlled. They have taken everyone from a gathering like this and put them on social media where everybody is, becomes addicted, sharing ideas and, and whatnot. And what happened just last week? Facebook goes down for an entire day and the entire world in the social realm of it ground to a halt. You've got, I mean, people like us, we didn't care. I was out on the river fishing that when it happened. So I was enjoying it. I wasn't being bothered. I caught one fish in a whole day, but hey, man, what do they say? A, a bad day fishing is better than a good day at work? <laughs> but, <laughs> but Facebook was down. And you take people my son and daughter's age, they lost their mind. They didn't know what to do, man. I mean, they had their text message, but they couldn't, they had no, no vein to the outside world, man. We are the ancient technology. Last year, I told y'all that there is coming a day when communications are going to be down. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know from what avenue it will come, but I'm telling you, communications are going to be stopped at some point. And we better grasp that concept now and understand we are the David. We have the slingshot. We are the black robe regimen. We have pages in our Bible. I could give example after example, but you get the idea. We are going to be that ancient technology of communication to communicate ideas, to communicate truth, to communicate safety, help, you name it. I came over here in October last year, Christmas Day in Nashville, Tennessee. The AT&T building blows up. Now, I'm not here to spread rumors, but what I am here to tell you is we have in Tennessee a emergency repeater system, and we had hams on the ground. 
right after it happened, giving reports of what was going on firsthand right there at the scene. Well, as close to the scene as they could get. And I will share with y'all later what some of those reports were, but it was not what we were being told on the news. So I know we understand this concept. We understand the mission at hand, but I don't think that we can comprehend yet the gravity until it happens. So this is why now we need to back out of the realm of society and the way we're being herded and start paying attention to the tapping of the clipboard. Thank you. Ancient ways, history repeating itself. Again, I'm not preaching to you, but this is a spiritual battle. We're battling evil. Amen. We are battling Luciferian. We are battling Moloch. You know, back in the ancient days uh, in Babylon, uh, you know, you take the Valley of Gehenna when uh, God came to Jeremiah and said, hey, you grab all the spiritual leaders and you take them down to the Valley of Gehenna and you show them what's going on. They were down there with all kinds of illicit sex acts, whether it be man and man, woman to woman, children, it didn't matter. The women that had newborns were throwing them into the furnace of Moloch and sacrificing them to the, to the fires of Moloch. They were doing all of this, and he was told to go down there and show the people or show the spiritual leaders that can do something about this. You show them, and then you break a clay pot. And you tell them, if you don't do something about this to change your ways, I'm going to break you like I broke that clay pot. Are we passing our children through the fires of Moloch today? Yep, yeah, we are. We're sacrificing them to Moloch. Of course, it's not called passing your children through the fires of Moloch. It's called abortion. And... If you step back and listen to the, the tapping of the clipboard, we can see these things. But, but getting back to ancient technology, and I'm going to share what I did last year. This is important. Kings and rulers of the day, they would, you know, the, the, the Lord would tell them how they are to live in this nation. And it was always something would happen to the king or the pharaoh or whoever was in charge that would start coming out and telling the people, no, 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 you need to start living this way, and then down the sewer they start to go. Back in the ancient of days, they used to polish brass bowls to a mirror sheen, and then they would fill it with water, and then they would jostle the bowl, and they would peer down into this, could see their reflection in, in the water that was just sloshing around, and whether it would be with hallucinogenic chemicals I don't know, but they would go into this trance, and then evil, Satan, would possess this person via this hypnotic method. And then it was Satan that was controlling this entity, and then he with them would go out and say, okay, this is the way we need to forget all this stuff we've been told from God. We need to start living this way. All throughout history, same thing. Until technology became... Uh, more apparent and they moved to now what's known as the black mirror or the scrying mirror y'all can look that up scrying it's like crying only with an S S-C-R-Y-I-N-G scrying mirror it was a black mirror that's all it was they would peer down into it and that's exactly what would happen they would get possessed by this demonic entity and as we go through the years, now it's in your face because we saw Disney commercial or Disney, uh, whatever that one is of Disney, where that princess looks at the black mirror on the wall and says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And this entity comes out of this mirror and it possesses this queen or whatever she is. 
So you ask yourself, well, we're not polishing brass blow, blah, 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 brass bowls, and our king is not peering into black mirrors. See, Satan has not changed his tactics. He has only changed as technology has changed. Because, have you ever looked at your phone in the off state? Black and reflective. It's a black mirror. Now, I know, don't think I'm crazy. Just hear me out. <laughs> when they changed to the black mirror in ancient times from the brass bowls, the language they would use is they would go into their room or whatever it is with their black mirror so they can channel this entity and be programmed. So what do we do now with our black mirrors, our TVs? We go to our favorite channel so we can watch our program. So Satan has not changed his tactics. He has just grown it through technology. Now the king don't have to appear at the black mirror. He's got each individual now peering at the black mirror. And what is happening to society? Are they changing from the ways that they were once brought up? Are we seeing a difference? Are we seeing a transition away from what this nation once was? And then you ask yourself, well, why? <laughs> why has it gotten that way? Well, we know that we're, we're, the mother cannot stay at home with the father working and rear the children. Now, with the taxes and Everything that's involved, you've got to keep up with the Joneses. Now both parents have to work, and the child is now put into institutions that this government has created purposely. It's all by design to indoctrinate the children with the black mirror because then when the child comes home from its indoctrination, we're too busy to, to interact and wash all that stuff out of their minds because we've got to get supper cooked. We've got to get sleep because we've got to be up, blah, blah. So do just throw them an iPad or go in there and watch TV, and there you go. Rinse, lather, and repeat. So if you take all these things into consideration, we are no different than any generation that has ever been. We're going through no, no different paths than any other generation has been. So it should not be a shock to us as we start seeing the dilapidation of a nation such as ours. And then you ask yourself, well, what can we do about it? This is why we're here. We're doing something about it right now. See, when I started my program, I could see these things, and it resonated with me. And, of course, I studied the Bible to... To, to see parallels of nations and what they go through as to what we're going through because we're just going to keep repeating it over and over, nonstop. Uh, what's been done will be done again. What's happened will happen again. There's nothing new under the sun, you know. That's from King Solomon himself. And so I began to start doing my show. I saw two years ago, it was two years ago, Bobby, not a year and a half, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, brother. But uh, I saw a need. You can ask my dad. I didn't have my ham license. I'm, I'm a truck driver, man. You know, I had the, I had the high-powered radio with the Connex board, 500 watt. You know, I was out there doing that deal. And. Uh, when Skip would roll, buddy, I could talk across the world. I'm just like, hey, check this out. I got a big radio in this old Peterbilt, right? And then I got to thinking. It's like, we're, we've got to do something with communication. I need, I need to start getting my hand. Now, I know when it all, if it all goes down, you're not going to need your ham license. But in the aspects of getting your ham license, it's opened me up to learning all kinds of things you can do with radio, frequency, 
transmissions. I didn't know, you know. I just thought I'd go out and buy a thousand dollar radio and whoop, whoop, I really do that deal now. And that's what I thought. But that's not what it is. It's a talent, it's an art, it's knowledge. Knowledge that you can put to use when the communications go down because you are going to be the ancient technology. My opinion, I mean, we're in the last days. My opinion, I can back it up for hours, but we've been called to continue to battle continue to save, continue to help until that time comes. Now, I have no idea when that's going to come. I, my opinion, we'll see it in our lifetime, but what, what if we don't? I mean, what if it's another 100,000 years down the road? What we're seeing coming upon us, and I'm going to tell you some things that, that you don't know, but what we have coming upon us in the near future, communications are going to be a struggle. And so we need to take the initiative now to understand this. Listen to the man tapping on the clipboard so that we can step out of society and take up our arms of RF and be ready when the time comes. All right. Many of y'all in the parking lot last night <laughs> heard some theories that I have, and they are just theories. Okay, I am not, I am not saying this is fact, chisel and stone. Matter of fact, the Bible says, "Trust no man." And so, I would urge you, you know, don't don't trust me. Find this out for yourself. But if you think of these freighters that are sitting out on our ports right now, okay, why are they out there? Why in 200-and-something years of this country's existence, we have never seen the problem that we're seeing now. I mean, with the technology that we have as far as computer, satellite tracking, you name it, why in the world could we have a supply chain issue? Why is there a supply? Has anybody ever asked that question? I've been in the transportation industry going on 30 years, and, I mean, I've... I've dealt with supply chain issues but of this magnitude no <laughs> man the technology in my truck now they could tell where my tire is sitting on the parking lot okay they can tell if I move that truck five feet or ten feet or fifty feet and you're telling me that there's a supply chain issue that all of these freighters are sitting out on our coasts and they don't, the only thing they can figure is there's a shortage of truck drivers. Well, you know, our port workers, they're, you know, we're, we're lacking in port workers. Whatever the excuse is, see, that's the, that's the, the hum in the room. That's not the truth. The truth is what's tapping on the clipboard. Amen. And what's tapping on that clipboard is... The spigot is being shut off. Now, I don't know the reason why. My opinion would be to starve us into submission. That would be my opinion. The spigot's purposely being turned off. And so, we're looking down the loaded barrel of this in the near future. We've already, how many, how many of you have started seeing your store shelves get depleted? And, and you ask yourself, you know, why? If it's out there on the ocean, why aren't you getting it into the ports? Um, I, doing my research, I had stumbled over, and I'm just telling you what's out there. China now and Russia together, they have been working on technology to put missile launchers inside these 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 uh, cargo containers. It's on hydraulics. The ceiling will raise up. The 
missile battery system will be bolted to the ceiling and then they can fire these from remote anywhere they want. But when it's in its closed state, it looks just like a regular container. Where only 10% to 20% of our containers are even inspected when they come into the port. So if they've got this technology and they can have the, the, the means of transporting containers all over our United States in specific areas and all that, could, you know, could they have snuck a few of these in? Could there be a few on these freighters that are sitting out there? By all means. And so now what we're looking at is a financial crisis to where we're running out of money. Who owns our debt? China. Now, <clears throat> let's see. I'll pick on somebody other than Bobby. <laughs> okay, Jack. Okay. If I was to buy a car from you, okay, and you gave me that car, you're holding my debt, right? If I'm making monthly payments to you. What are you going to do when I stop making those payments? Are you, are you, are you going to call me up and be like, hey, smoke house, just go ahead and keep it, man. It's all good. Or are you going to come get the car? <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm going to hold you to it. We've got how many witnesses here now? <laughs> So China owns our debt. And if we default, would they not want collateral? I mean, they wanted the uranium in Afghanistan. And now it's given to them. And Robert, again, thank you for your son's service. But, and I, I, I'm just spitballing here, okay? Nothing I'm telling you is chiseled in stone. I'm just spit. What I am doing is I am tapping on a clipboard. That's all I'm doing. You interpret the message as being tapped. So if that's the case, and these freighters are sitting out on our, our oceans. Now, to my understanding, they have extended. They're going to raise the debt ceiling through something like December. Okay? Maybe we've been given a reprieve. What happens in December? They're already telling you don't even worry about Christmas. Fauci's already telling you stay home for Christmas. Can't celebrate Christmas. Well, why not? Why not? Well, because we have this virus. And I'm, I'm not here to talk about the virus. I had the coronavirus. It almost killed me. It almost killed my dad. We were both in the hospital. I mean, I was... He and I both were two weeks apart but we were we were knocking on heaven's door buddy <laughs> it's, it's some bad stuff but I'm not I'm not, I'm not afraid of it because I have been told in the word Amen. 365 times which is one a day do not fear Amen. so I take that one a day and I don't fear now I know I know it says that if you Hide yourself under the wing of the Almighty. No plague will come nigh that dwelling. I had a plague come nigh my dwelling, but it didn't get me. Amen. Now, the Bible says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. People take that and be like, well, well, this virus is prospering. No, it's not. He said the weapon would be created. He said the weapon would be used. It's not going to prosper. Amen. So we can't be bogged down, and I, I use that as an example for this. We, we cannot be bogged down in the fact that <sighs> Zuckerberg deleted my comment on Facebook. Man, I was so on fire. I had it figured out. And he deleted my post, man. 
<laughs> well, the sun's not out yet. Zuckerberg deleted my post, man. Ah, it's the end of the world. I'm not going to be able to do anything. No, you're not. I'm not going to be able to do anything. But with this, with this program that I have, it's by the grace of God. It's even still on some of the things I talk about, folks. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, every day, every day I'm just expecting to be gone. Just, just gone. No long, Even my website, gone, you know. But see, I don't worry because you know why? Nothing that I am doing on that program other than spreading knowledge and, and hopefully truth. None of that's going to matter. None of that's going to help when the communications go down. Because if the communications go down, there's not a YouTube, Facebook, telephone, cell phone that's going to be able to do anything. But you know what will? <laughs> Anna Yezu 857D. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have RF, folks. Something as simple as a wire up the tree, and we're off to the races. You know, you you ever heard that expression? Don't you know? You take someone who's poor and someone who's filthy rich, and then there's two open graves in the ground, and at the end, you're both going to be equal, laying, right? Well, guess what? We are battling a spirit, not only a spirit that is influencing our children, that is influencing our lives. For goodness sakes, getting back to the coronavirus, let's step back and look last year. What was left open and what was closed? All the churches in America were closed. They were arresting preachers for opening their churches. Why? Why did evil close down the church? Because it's unfortunate. Christians don't really understand the power of prayer and faith. But evil does. Evil does. Did that not? I mean, that should have been the pen bouncing off the clipboard when that happened. It's like, whoa. Evil understands the power of God, shouldn't we? So, once we understand this, the spiritual battle that we are in that's influenced in everything that we do, it does not matter if it's Facebook, trust me, I wish y'all could just go to work with me for a day, okay? <laughs> because uh, everybody knows of my program. And many of them that don't even listen to it, that first thing, I'll walk in. It don't matter who is in the office. I'll walk in. There's old doomsday. When's this all going to hit, Smokehouse? By the way, Smokehouse is my CB handle. Excuse me, my 11-meter handle. <laughs> When's this going to happen, Smokehouse? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm just telling you, uh, just watch, you know, what's going on. Last year, we were all excited, man, because we were right before, we are a month before the election, man. And we were fired up. We were fired up, man, because Trump had it in the bag. And I told you all then, I said, we have something at work that's of a darkness we haven't experienced yet. Look where we sit today. You know, I... We can sit here and say, well, it was stolen. It, uh, yeah, of course it was. We, we, we know it, but what's being done about it? I mean, the Arizona audits, yeah, they, they've come out. It showed proof, but we have no one in our corner defending us. Courts have failed us. Congress has failed us. State has failed us. Your local officials have failed us. We are the only ones on the individual stage that can protect our constitutional rights. Amen. And we still have them. 
and we need to execute them. We have freedom of speech to say what we want to do. If you get out there and you talk about truth and you get thrown in jail, go to work with me one day. <laughs> the snickers and the points and the laughs, you know, they're doomsday, man. But this spiritual battle seeps into everything, including ham radio. Mark, where's Mark? Mark said it the best. He got back on ham radio after a short reprieve, and he's like, man, what happened to the radio? I want to do something about it. Look at Bobby. Okay? Bless his heart. Last year, he couldn't even find his way to breakfast that morning. Remember that? <laughs> he wanted to do something about it. Look, at, look, look how many of us are sitting here right now. Just because these two men wanted to do something about it. Do you want to do something about it? Of course you do. Of course you do. But we have to understand the, 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 the enemy. So we have been doing the friendly bunch. Everyone knows what we try to do on the friendly bunch and what happens there. Whistles blow, burping, music playing. Especially when you get close to this small. Exactly. When you, when you, why? Because the unity of a whole. How many of you have ever been to a Trump rally? Okay. Well, for those of you that hadn't, I wasn't doing it. <laughs> let me define what it's like. <laughs> I, had, uh, I had a press pass, as a matter of fact, when I went to the rally in March of 2016 when he came to Nashville. And uh, it, uh, I was able to go down into the press box and hang out with, like, all of the people uh, Sean Spicer, you know, the press secretary, and Jesse Waters was down there, and my wife just literally accosted me because I didn't get my picture made with Jesse Waters. <laughs> and I'm just like, sorry. I had other things on my mind, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I was down there in the pit with them. And uh, so, but while you're there, it's just like it's just like last night in the parking lot. A few of y'all, you know, we have met last year, but but the the rest of you, I just met last night, and there was no formal greeting. Hey, who are you? What do you do for a living? You know, the the fifteen to twenty minute warm up. We all just kind of communed, and it was like we knew each other for years, sharing stories of turkeys flying through my windshield. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, but, but what I'm saying is that it is a family unit. We are all family. And when you go to a Trump rally, it's like you, it, it, there's just this higher level of something I can't explain your family. I mean, it, you, you could just walk up to somebody you've never even seen before and just start talking, and you'll stand there and talk for an hour. It's amazing, the unity. The Bible says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. We believe that? Amen. We're seeing it every day. This unity is what we are trying to share, to clean up amateur radio. Started by two guys and such, and look at what it's grown to. Now, you might ask yourself, well, yeah, how we get laughed at? People know we talk on the friendly bunch. We'd be talking to other hammer off. Too, you talk on the friendly bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I talk on the friendly bunch all the time. Matter of fact, I got a wire that if I'm parked, I'll take my hamstick off and throw my wire up the tree and screw it into my antenna mount. Yeah, that way I can really be heard on the friendly bunch. Mm. But we're battling a spiritual battle on the air. Why? What possesses someone to want to come into this channel and wreak havoc and try to silence communication? Because they're not trying to silence communication. They're trying to silence truth truth now we're not on there you know giving the latest stats on uh, okay the political right 
we're sharing rooted truth, ancient technology truth, root truth. You could sit out there, folks, and you could cut the fruit off of a tree for years trying to get rid of the bad fruit. For years. You could be out there with your prunes just cutting the fruit every day. But until you deal with the root, you're always going to have to deal with the fruit. And what we have to understand is, is that we have to deal with the root. Understand the enemy. Listen to the tapping on the keyboard. It may cost us a lot. It may cost us your job. I mean, it may cost, who knows what it's going to cost. It cost Robert his son. But I can guarantee you, Robert's going to be the first one in line, and I'm going to be right beside him when it's called. It's not going to be easy. Look at the disciples. You ever, you ever seen how they died? Beheaded, boiled to death in hot oil. Yeah, it's not, it's not a glorious uh, job, but we've been called to do it. Now, this is going to be hard to find, but if you do your research, you can find it. I had a friend of mine who was associated with this uh, emergency repeater. I, I told you this, Bobby, last year, and it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. Now, anyone that knows me, my show is at 6 o'clock, and by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, do not call me, do not text me, do not forget I exist, because those two hours, man, I'm getting focused, all right? And so it was about that time before show on a Saturday, and my buddy calls me. He was part of this uh, repeater system. He said, to, hey, man, have you heard anything? Odd. I was like, <laughs> you want a list? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, man, I got a buddy of mine, and uh, he's part of Homeland Security, and he just got off the phone with me. And I was like, yeah. He said, yeah, he wanted us to kind of test our repeater systems as quickly as we could and just get the, the results back as to the footprint and how, if they, you know, what's working and all that. I'm like, why? He's like, I could tell you what I think it is because he kind of told me something, but he wasn't at liberty to say why. He just wanted an idea, you know, of a footprint should they need to contact us for emergency services. Now, I do not know if this was a federal sanctioned interaction or if this was just someone who worked for Homeland Security that knows something that just casually, hey, man, do me a favor, you know, I have no idea. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm digging at him to try to get him to talk. He says, well, all he told me was that in the coming months, six meters is going to be incredible. And I said, mm-hmm. We all know how six meters propagates, right? So I'm like, okay. I was like, dude, I was like, call in on my show. No, I ain't going to do that. I said, come on, man. No, can't do it. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, okay. I said, can I mention it? He said, yeah, if you want to, just don't use any names. I said, okay. So I got on there and I mentioned it. Now, I don't know what the coming months meant. I don't know if it meant two or three months or if it meant two or three years. Okay? I have no idea. So I started doing my research. Y'all can look this up. Directly after that, up in Nigeria, supposedly they found a weapons storage facility that they did not know was there because there was this massive explosion in Nigeria, and it blew a crater in the ground, wiped out half of the town, and you can look this up, you know, the, uh, an explosion in Nigeria, and, and you can look at the aerial 
footage of it when they're flying over it. It was no bomb, folks. It wasn't a bomb. The scientists were coming out saying this was a this was a this was a, a meteor strike, and they were silenced. And I'm like, I think the phone call I got in was in March and maybe April. It's when this happened. But look it up. Look it up. Bomb explodes in Nigeria and look at that crater. And you're going to be like, mm -mm. <laughs> ain't no way. So that got me to thinking of the phone call that I had had. So I started doing some more research. Because we're being told that it was a, some explosives. that They had no idea it was there and they just happened to find it. And <sighs> darn it, it blows up. All right. That's the, that's the murmur of the crowd. I want to know what's happening on that clipboard. So I started doing some more research and found out that we have a series cluster of meteors that are coming by our Earth. Okay, no, nothing, nothing uh, city busting, no big meteors, just a normal. We have meteor showers all the time. But these clusters are a lot bigger, and they're not fully going to burn up in our atmosphere as they always do and biscuit sized meteorites will be touching the ground in various places now we're 70 percent water i mean 70 percent chance they'll just fall out in the water and no big deal but how many of you have been witnessed this past summer of all the wildfires that happened in canada washington oregon idaho are y'all familiar with all those wildfires now some were set by people. They've arrested some people that supposedly started these things. But a lot of them have been these meteorites that haven't been burning up and hitting the ground. Now, Dad and I, we live outside of Nashville about 30 miles, 20, 25 miles. Halfway between me and Dad is a little town called Pigram, and there's a chain of stores. And there's a little Pigram grocery store right in those chains. And I was getting ready for a show one day. And uh, my sister shot me a text, the Pigram store is on fire. And I was like, what? Yeah, there was an explosion. And I was like, okay. Because I had just heard on the news, not just two minutes before she texted me, there was an apartment complex that just, for no reason, went up in flames in North Nashville. And, uh, and now this Pigram store, just for no reason, they just heard a... a an explosion in the stores burning to the ground. Dad calls me, not, what, two minutes after that? His woods were on fire behind his house. And I'm like, what's going on? And so I, <laughs> here I am, I'm a hypocrite. I go to Facebook, <laughs> and, and there was a fire that busted out in the field in Craigie Hope, which is kind of southwest of us. And then out in Dixon, there was another field fire. All these fires erupted at the exact same time, within a minute or two of each other. And I got the map out, and if you pop the chalk line from about the northwest or northeast to the northwest, every one of those fires was in that line that started at the same time. And it was like, okay. But they just said it was just, you know, it just happened. Well, I got to looking, and there's websites you can go to that show when people, like, see meteors explode or whatnot. And about three to four minutes from these fires, they were reporting hearing the shaking of houses and meteors blowing up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oak Ridge, Knoxville. Was it a meteor? I can't, I can't tell you that. I can't. But it is awful odd how all of this was anyway the point being is so we started uh, the the gentlemen and in the in the group that I follow with them have told us yeah they're going to be coming in sporadically throughout but they're going to be increasing and these these cluster groups are going to be getting bigger 